Hey everyone, welcome back. We got a fun one today. It's also the perfect Chroma Showcase. I don't get to take him out very often besides that Javlock video, so I'm glad he's here again. We've got eight scary, scary Soaktron builds today. Oh, this? It was a skin you could get by trading Nakak Pearls during the Dog Days event this past June, directly preceding the Sisters of Parvos update in July. You can use this skin on about half the assault rifles on the game. The key requirement is it must shoot standard ballistic bullets. There are a few exceptions, but generally anything with alt fires or abnormal munition types you can't use it on. But I'm actually using a HEMA. Now, most of you may know the HEMA as a meme gun, where it has passable single target damage and its real purpose is only to quickly get Chroma's Vex armor to max buff at a moment's notice. The advent of galvanized mods and the attempted galvanized CO fix have changed the future of this weapon forever. This is one of those weapons that has multiplicative scaling with galvanized aptitude instead of base damage. Ever wanted to have Eclipse and Vex armor on the same build? Well, this mod is literally Eclipse for Hema. Sure, it scales off inflicted status effects, but with the base stats on Hema, you basically have status everywhere anyways. Normally on weapons that use aptitude, you don't bring serration. Your only other source of base damage would be weapon arcanes. That means getting the first kill is always going to be difficult, but this is not the case here. The instant self buff from Hema for Vex armor means you easily jump over that hurdle with a monstrous amount of base damage straight out of the box, and because aptitude is multiplicative on Hema, you aren't wasting slots like as if you slotted Serration with Vex Armor. If you aren't familiar with how Vex Armor works, it's essentially a massive Serration. This means you don't need to add any more base damage on the bill due to the Law of Diminishing Returns. You could throw on a Serration for another 165% base damage, which is towered over by an 800% Vex Armor base damage buff, or you could responsibly spend those slots instead on building more crits, status, elements, or other unique mods. And remember, we even have Weapon Arcanes now. It already wasn't recommended to slot Serration or Hornet Strike with Weapon Arcanes, and this stems from the same reason as Vex Armor. But Weapon Arcanes are not even half as strong as a standard Vex Armor buff, so it should be pretty obvious now why you would never slot base damage mods on a weapon with Chroma. The Galvanized CO mods change things up a little bit, as with high status weapons you can still get 600 or 720 percent base damage out of them, which is actually worth it compared to Serration, which is only 165 on Chroma. But like I said, this time it's acting like Eclipse instead, which makes it even better than normal. Let's take a look at that Hema. It's a burst fire weapon that has innate viral. It can't really crit properly, but has fair crit multipliers. We can get around this easily because Vex Armor and innate viral freeze up slots on the weapon. The reload is 2.0, which is very tolerable, especially if you slot Merciless in the arcane slot. The innate viral with 25% status may seem decent, but actually this is insane. I said the Hema is a burst fire weapon with three shots coming out in each tap. You have a massively higher chance of an inflicting a viral status because of this compared to a single shot weapon. Also, innate viral on a weapon is extremely rare. Now for the unique perk, this weapon has infinite ammo because it draws its ammo from your health. Instead, each time you reload this weapon, it drains a certain amount of health. An empty magazine drains 15 HP in this scenario. There are 20 bursts per magazine. The amount of HP drained scales linearly with magazine missing. So shooting half the magazine only drains eight here and shooting one quarter would drain four and etc. But there is a very interesting interaction here. This health drain is calculated based on magazine missing every single time the game's engine requests a reload. Normal reloads will refill the entire magazine, so I only do the drain once. But what if you use holster reload mods such as tactical reload or synth mods? Well, the magazine will reload over time. But how does the game engine treat reloads over time? It treats each instance as a separate reload action, but it will only reload a fraction of the total magazine. The consequence? Letting the weapon holster reload results in many, many drains as the game will be calling multiple reloads per second on the back end. This also has another unique side effect. The drain of a single reload scales linearly, but the drain of holster reloads does not. Why? Because it is based on the current magazine missing at each reload request. If you spend only 25% of the magazine in holster reload, every reload tick will be working from 25% missing slowly back up to 0% missing. If you spend 100% of the magazine and holster reload, every reload tick will be working from 100% missing back up to 0% missing. The holster reload is a fixed percent of the total magazine per second, so not only are emptier holster reloads slower, but this also means they spend more time at a very low magazine amount. 
Lower magazine amounts drain more HP per tick, and spend also a lot more time ticking. These two effects interact multiplicatively with each other in practice. The actual reload process is very fast and not clearly noticeable, but the drain does take longer on bigger holster reloads. This interaction between underlying game mechanics is what allows you to self-damage so effectively with a Hema to buff your Vex armor. Therefore, a holster reloading with a specific amount of ammo missing will always drain the same amount of HP. Holster reload speed percent, on the other hand, will determine how fast this amount of HP is drained. To complicate matters further, Hema does not drain an absolute amount of HP per tick, it drains percent HP max. So I want to keep this simple and we're going to be using a standard shield gate chroma with the base 300 HP only. Vex armor requires 100 HP drained to max out the buff. If you have 300 HP, with the holster reload mechanics this would require exactly 9 bursts of Hema to be fired or 27 ammo expended out of the 60 for 33 remaining. If I swing my melee after this, so long as I have at least a single holster reload mod present somewhere on my entire loadout, I will lose 105 HP. The Hema isn't actually draining at 105 HP, but like I said, rather 35% of my total HP. If I use Vitality instead for 740 max, shooting 27 ammo and holstering would drain 257, which is once again roughly 35% of my total HP bar. But we are planning a shield gate meta, so I'm not going to spend mod slots on Vitality. Besides, you could just use Heat Elemental Ward if you want a health bump. As I said, so long as you have one holster reload mod, you will always lose the same amount of HP for ammo missing. More holster reload mods only increase how quickly this drain finishes. The build I will show you today will be using two synth mods on the companion and one holster reload mod on Hema itself. So let's look at that Hema build. Surprise, it's another gas build. But are you even actually surprised? This is following my previous trends where we turn a single target weapon into AoE with gas. This works exceedingly well due to the overwhelming firepower on Chroma, but we have the standard galvanized multi-shot and the aptitude which I mentioned acts like Eclipse on this weapon. Although Hema is only capable of inflicting two elements, this results in an extra 160% multiplicative damage from aptitude, or a final 2.6 times damage multiplier. Prime Shred not only increases our fire rate, but the added punch through means we are building gas on several enemies at once, significantly increasing our DPS. So hitting two enemies with one shot means now you're building twice the gas stacks. The Primed Bane is self-explanatory because it's another 2.4 times total damage multiplied to our AoE gas clouds. We have double critical damage mods on this build because it only has base 11% crit chance and isn't worth building using mod slots. Instead, I will bump up our crit chance with the Arcane Avenger which gives us a flat 45% and is equivalent to a 409% point strike. Hammershot also actually gives us a little extra status to push the build to nearly 100%. The final two slots are obviously taken up by the Gas 6060 mods. As I spoke earlier, we're slotting Tactical Reload in the X list so that we can get the health drain down faster to set up our Vex armor. Primary Deadhead is our arcane today for two reasons. The base 2 second reload is low enough it isn't really a huge issue, Merciless would only cut it down to 1.5. The gap is noticeable, but still low enough I don't think it's worth a slot. The second reason is primary deadhead doesn't have the bug that secondary deadhead has with gas, where it resets the arcane randomly on kills to no stacks. This is important because a max rank deadhead contributes an additional 30% headshot multiplier and also 50% less recoil, turning the Hema into a perfect laser beam. Because we are dot killing crowds with gas and gas dots can headshot, it will actually double dip this headshot multiplier to do 69% nice more multiplicative damage. Another bonus is that the 360% base damage from a max rank deadhead only takes 3 headshot kills, which once again can proc off gas because gas can headshot dot. As you can see, this loadout is completely swimming in separate final multiplicative bonuses. And each stack lasts 24 seconds instead of Merciless's 4 second duration and requiring 12 kills to max. Deadhead also decays one stack at a time, so you have a ton more time to manage your gameplay and retain max stacks compared to Merciless. I'm bringing a primer Exodia Contagion Zaw today. Look at all of these elements on the left. Basically, I tried to balance their weights as evenly as possible. The weapon has Weeping Wounds as well and is stacked for maximum combo duration where possible. I have a stat stick token epitaph primer I'm also bringing today, which we won't really be using. 
It is there to prime, but the real purpose is to bring secondary dexterity, which will contribute another 7.5 seconds combo duration to our Zaw for a grand total of 22.5 seconds. This Zaw reaches 219.6% status at 12x combo with Weeping Wounds, and you only need to quick melee an enemy once about every 20 seconds to keep the combo up. You could even bring Naramon if you're really worried for Power Spike to not drain the counter completely instead of Zenrake for Energizing Dash. While boosting Viral status would be nice, it isn't as important for you could boost Viral further, or you could inflict more status effects, where each one you add to the AoE gives another 80% final multiplicative bonus when you shoot them due to how Galvanized Aptitude works on Hima. You could always just throw more to give more Viral stacks also. Therefore, we're using a primer focus on applying as many different status effects as possible today instead of maximizing Viral. You actually don't even need to use this, but I just want to show you what primer to use if you're considering on taking this Chroma build into Endless Steel Path. The Lasting Sting also extends all status effects inflicted by this Zaw to 12.6 seconds. Now for the feature of the show, Chroma himself. This is his build today. It's a very unorthodox Chroma build. We tanked efficiency and built for some range and standard strength. A negative efficiency chroma can be difficult to keep up, but this is actually supplemented by Prime Flow and Energize today, as well as the Equilibrium Synergy with a Panzer with Viral Quills and Synth that I'll explain later, so I don't expect there to be any energy problems. You could still bring Xenric if you need to. This is a shield gating chroma. This means our main source of survivability is not from health tanking, but rather shield gating. You can still take heat chroma for extra health if you want, or toxin for even more DPS potential by a 44% reload bonus, which makes up for not running primary merciless. That would cut down Hima's reload to just 1.39 seconds. This particular stat scales with duration, so if you want even faster reloads, mod for that. I'm happy enough cutting down the reload time to this, so I don't really need to. Anyways, just make sure to not add any more shields onto the build. We also have Rolling Guard to remove any pesky status effects, as well as quick iframes to regenerate our shields. We have 3 Augur mods on this loadout, 2 on our Epitaph, and Augur Reach on our Chroma. Therefore, we get 120% energy to shield conversion. Every single one of Chroma's abilities will regenerate enough shields on cast with a Decay Dragon Key equipped to max it out again, so rolling and then casting will instantly give you back full shield gain. I've modded for 175 range on the build because our helmet of choice today is Ensnare. You don't really need to use this ability on base steel path, but it will be very useful for endless runs where you will really want clumped up enemies to amplify the gas dots overlapping by shooting into the crowd. Obviously, we need strength, so I went as high as I could with slots remaining by taking Blind Rage and Transient Fortitude. This gets us up to 698% base damage from Vex Armor, which is more than enough to get Hima rolling immediately. The 888% armor bonus will also come in handy so you don't die instantly if your shield gate expires, especially if you're on a Heat Chroma for the extra health max. You can always top up on health using Operator Arcane Select Magus Elevate. We already have a source of self damage on the build, but I'm still bringing a combat discipline to proc Arcane Avenger as Hima cannot proc it. Not only are you killing enemies fast, but the CC from Ensnare significantly cuts down on the amount of incoming firepower you will take. Therefore, this is the only way to reliably proc it because the high KPS will give many, many chances for it to proc. This is also what gives our Hima some semblance of crit consistency by pushing it up to 56% with Avenger and the reason why we still modded Vital Sense and Hammer Shot on the weapon. Prime sure footage should be pretty self-explanatory at this point to prevent knocks. If you don't got that, slot handspring. As I said, I'm bringing a Panzer today, which significantly helps our energy economy through viral quills. It spreads easily between enemies, especially when ensnared. Sport enemies count as pet assists, which will trigger synth deconstruct to drop health orbs from enemies at 25% per assist. Synth Fiber will let you pick up these health orbs even when you're at full HP, which will convert into energy due to equilibrium on Chroma. These Synth mods are now doing double duty since they also function to speed up the self damage from Hima's holster reload whenever you need to set Vex armor back up. Remember, it takes 9 bursts if you have 300 HP only. If you use Heat Elemental Ward and it's active, it would take even less. The rest of the build is pretty basic. Martyr to save you if you screw up and die by giving you health back and very short iframe periods. Panzer for infinite lives on your cat, Tech Assault to dodge lethal hits, and the standard Link mods, Radar, as well as Vacuum. And that's it. I'm going to showcase this on a non-Chroma first so you can see how well it performs without Vex armor. It takes a fair amount to get the first kill, so this is why I strongly recommend killing off some fodder first, but the weapon still works extremely well even without the monstrous buffs and elemental ward synergy. Therefore, you can technically use this weapon on any frame loadout, but I really crafted this build and video to showcase my original main, Chroma, before I got onto Vault. A rather simple to use Chroma loadout that hides the amount of synergy and interactions underlying the kit. It has an extremely high amount of quality of life. I actually really enjoy the way this plays because it's essentially a one weapon loadout 
loadout unless you bring the melee primer. While Hima is very difficult to research weapon in a dojo, I feel this at least does it some justice by turning it into a proper nuke weapon. And hey, you can even use the Soaktron rifle skin on it. Once again, we're turning a single target into an AoE nuke. I'm gonna leave this with the rest of the video to how it handled on Steel Path as seeing is believing. I'm certain this setup will not fail to impress you. If you ever wanted a reason to take this weapon out again and dust it off for reasons besides just being a buff stick for Chroma, well, here it is. Enjoy! If this is your first time watching, feel free to leave like or better yet subscribe. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. 79.5% of you are not subscribed. I'm trying my best to get you new information out always as soon as possible. Like I've done with covering the Sisters of Parvels and Plague Star updates. Stick around if you want to see interesting memes and builds on a nearly daily basis. I'm also preparing to get into the vote first once more new war info drops. You won't miss out on any of that, do you? That'll be it for this video. Thank you all for watching and see you all next time.